Now time for the, the everybody's favorite part of another one bites the dust. The weird sounds interlude. Everybody likes this part where it goes. You know it's depressing. I'm pretty sure this is still gonna get copyright claimed, <laughs> even though it's every other beat is missing. Oh well. Such is life. Another one buster. So I'm gonna finish part four today. That's the plan, Stan. We got two more volumes left and then we have DMQ, which is a, uh, it's an epilogue of sorts. And we'll be doing that as well. Oh, shut your trap phone. I'm just gonna have to ask you to shut the hell up right damn now. Uh, so we got another one bites the dust is this current volume. Uh, by the way, I usually start off these streams with like memes or something, but uh, this one, th this one and the last one, the opening artworks for these chapters have just been so sick. Where I'm like, I'm leaving this in. Also, like the numbers on the face is kind of some part eight shit. Weirdly enough. Ba -ba 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 -da -da -da. Uh, I think DMQ came out around the time, like, part five was being made. I think it was just shortly after part four. It is lesser known. I, I want to bring more attention to it. And if you don't want to get spoiled on it, go ahead and read it, you know, and skip out on this and then catch it up, catch up on it in the VOD. Because it's quite the read. Like, don't spoil yourself on it. It's very spoilery. Okay. All right, so let's get to it. Let me know if I, like, sound all right and everything's... Working well, it looks like everything is fine. Uh, okay, so where are, where were we? I think this is kind of a jump back, yeah. Right when, right about when Rohan Kishibe fell victim to comma cheap tricks back clinging attack. This is when. Uh, also, I checked this early passage, and uh, it does flash back to the child penis scene, uh, but. There is no child penis, so I won't need to, like, black it out or anything. But, uh, Kira just casually coming out of the shower with his, like, dad jeans. After having straight-up murdered Hayato. Oh, right. And he chews his fingernails when he's stressed. It's all about his fucking hands. Like, his fingernails grow to give him his weird urges. And, uh, wow. And his, uh, he chews his fingernails. And later we see some more, like, fingernail gore, too. When he's, like, super stressed. Yeah, here we go. Here's the beginning of it. So we get a flashback. I, I guess last time we saw this, we didn't get the resolution to this scene. So his dad comes in floating on the fucking photograph. And he's like, oh, yeah. You're totally fucked, man. Rohan Kishibe figured out who you are. Now Johto is going to come whoop your ass. And, uh, ready for that nail gore? He carved the words victory into it. <coughs> gross. Really gross. And he gets pissed off at his dad. And this is, uh... So I guess... Potential, like if you haven't seen part five, it is potential small spoilers. I'm going to keep it as spoiler-free as possible. But this is... This is, is going to be something that's a bit of a flash-forward discussion. Uh... Some people debate whether this is the creation of a Requiem stand. Because that's something that happens later on, where there's uh, 
some shenanigans can happen with the arrow that uh, that give you like an enhanced ability. I really don't. There's a child yelling outside. It's great. Uh, I really don't think Araki was thinking about that uh, at this point, but it is similar. So the arrow like sticks out of the photo. It like magnetically is just attracted to Kira, and it just like schlops all the way up his arm. It's fucking like nauseating. Like right under the skin. That's that's kind of like the bubble in his veins. Uh, do you guys hear this? There's like a baby crying outside. I swear, it's like I always kind of like wait for them to shut up to start streaming, and then it's like right when I start streaming, they're like, "Bah." The arrow moved on its own. I think it does that a few times. It was kind of like magnetically pointing to people earlier. Why did the arrow have to go so deep? I don't fucking know. It's so extra. It's so extra. Uh, and now we're gonna have the Bites the Dust arc, which is a very famous arc. And Oh, and we got Melonhead Kira now. Right, the first time you see his hair, it's a little weird. Like, these, these black strands. I guess it's revealing that the black strands are, like, combed over. I don't even really know how that works. There's a guy in one of the, uh, Rohan, uh, like, one-offs. I almost call it an OVA. It's, it got made into an OVA. It's the guy on the treadmill. Who just has, like, hair that I just don't even know what I'm looking at. You know, because at least here it's like, okay... I could, like, you know, a cosplayer could, like, mimic this hair in real life with, like, commitment. But this, there's this one guy who just has, like, weird little, like, cubes in his hair, and I'm like, I don't even know what those are meant to represent. Oh, yeah, he's humming little music bars here. I don't know. It's been forever since I was in band. There's no, like, key signature or anything, but I don't know. Is that, is he humming an actual song? It's just half note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, quarter note, half note. I don't know what n actual notes those are, though. Be funny if he was humming like another one bites the dust or something. He yummed another one buster. Ding, ding, ba, 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 ba. So yeah, he's super confident now because he's got a new ability. And uh, I, I have often thought to myself, like, what is really the point of of this ability? But it actually kind of does make sense. Like, I remember for a long time being like, oh, why does... So, basically, the ability is he... Every time Hayato reveals his identity to someone, that person blows up. And then it, like, rewinds time and resets the day, and Hayato's the only one that remembers. And I was always like, why is that... Why does it reset time? Why don't you just leave all your enemies dead? But it's because he wants a quiet life. You know, he, he wants to... He wants everything to seem normal. He doesn't want just a bunch of random people exploding. You know? So that that was sort of the... I know that might just seem obvious to some people, but that was... For a long time, I was like, he's so stupid. Like, why does he rewind time? It's like he, he achieved his goal easily, and then he's like, oh, I'm gonna rewind time and then give Hayato the advantage by having him be the only one that remembers. But no, he just wants Hayato to shut up. You know? Anyway. Why even blow them up? I, that's kind of just for, like, show. <laughs> it's it's kind of just, like, to be extra devastating. Honestly, it's not even really necessary. He could just reset the day. Oh, but no, but, because then they're fated to blow up in every other incarnation. So, no. Wait, because then they're fated... To, there's the whole thing with fate, which makes no fucking sense in its own right, but... It's like things that repeat in the day are like fated to happen again. So once people are going to blow up, they're always going to blow up, right? It's not like Hayato's going to go back and then not blow them up. So it's not like that's going to help be conspicuous or inconspicuous. I don't know. Oh. This is why it's kind of confusing. It's like, does he want to get noticed or not? Does he want to kill them or not? I don't know. It just works. It just works. <laughs> All right, whatever. He is kind of looking like Pee Wee on the far left. That's very true. That's a very sassy stance. I am invincible. So, yeah. Now, this is where his character kind of takes a turn. He kind of just goes insane with power. Uh, he, he's just like, oh, I'm, I'm untouchable. I can't fucking be beaten at all. 
gets rid of his trace, but but then why even reset the day at all? Why not just blow them the fuck up every time Hayato tells someone? Why would they be rather... Mm. Okay, no, he goes more insane. He, like, snaps. This is what's known as a snap moment. Okay, so Rohan shows up. I remember in the anime, the music during this part is, like, really hype when Rohan shows up. For some reason, it's like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. Maybe it's for, like, manga readers who already knew it was going to happen to be like, Oh, shit! Uh, so he's like, oh, I'm going to ask you about the photo, but... Hayato's like, ah, shite. Oh, right! There's a really interesting interaction here. I like how Araki kind of indulges a lot of these, like, Oh, what would happen if this weird ability interacted with this other weird ability? It's like he shows us some crazy shit would happen. You know? It's like he reads Hayato without his permission, and he gets this weird little warning that he's never seen before. He's like, what? What the fuck? He's like, there's there's never, like, fourth wall breaks in, in the books that I read out of people. And then there's this weird shit where it, like, predicts the future. Or at least it's like, this is just so, sort of showing that Rohan, even though he's reading this, he has no control over it, I guess. And, uh, oh, is this is where the Pepsi product placement is, too. Hold on. Yeah! Oh, and he's got a Gucci watch, too. <laughs> Rohan canonically goes to Gucci. There is literally a spin-off comic where Rohan goes to Gucci. He went to Jared. Anyway. Uh... Why didn't Okyasu delete the electric pylon with his hand when Josuke was trapped inside? Was that, was that ever a thing? I'm having trouble remembering even what particular part you're talking about. I know it's like chili pepper. Could you be thinking of Keicho? I don't think Josuke ever got sucked by uh, chili pepper. I don't know. Uh, so he's like, oh shit, there's some crazy stand shenanigans going on here. Oh, and all the, all the shit that's written in here, I don't think they actually read all of it out loud. Oh, hell yeah, that's a cool panel. Uh, but I don't think they read it all out in the anime, but they just show it very briefly. What do I do? Kill Dad. He's a murderer. I know what he really is. He's not human. I saw him kill a man and woman. My dad is not my dad. Really cool touches. Ability, ability. <laughs> I know what he really is. It's super ominous, and then the way... Somebody was saying that Part 4 anime is better than the manga. I don't know about that. I, I honestly have no idea. But, uh... A lot of moments in the Part 4 anime were really well done. And this moment where Rohan, like, puts it all together... I think it's really well done here, too. Isn't this a cool page? Where it shows, like, the, the fade transition from the Kira they knew to Kawajiri and, like, all the flashbacks and shit. Very well done. And then he's like, oh, yeah, by the way, Rohan also dies because of the new ability. And this, this particular cell here has been my phone background forever. There's a, it's just, I have a picture that's just like sort of the, uh, the skull plaid pattern that he has on his tie. And it has this guy poking out from underneath it. It's been my phone background for like two years now. Uh, but here it is, Bites the Dust, his third bomb. Uh, he, he appears in your eye, and then uh, you just fucking blow up. Him appearing in your eye is also unnecessary. It's like, it might as well just directly, it, you might as well just instantly explode. Can you post the background in chat? Oh, it's on my phone, it'll take forever, I'm sorry, just Google it. Someone else said they had it, so maybe they can post it. Uh, oh, and here's a famous line coming up. Absolutely famous line. Oh, by the way, uh, for some reason, Bites the Dust takes a couple seconds to actually kick in for Rohan when it doesn't for anyone else. It like does like a preliminary tiny explosion and then like a big second explosion for no reason. Literally no reason. It's just nonsense, but whatever. It's, it's just a little touch of drama. And Rohan fucking dies and goes, Guh-huh! 
and then uh, and then Groundhog Day happens. You know, I was just watching a Star Trek TNG episode actually that was very similar to Bites the Dust, and I wasn't even thinking about it. It was like the Enterprise kept blowing up over and over again. That's hilarious in retrospect. I'm taking a drink of water. Uh, why did why does Killer Queen have cat ears? There's just this like cat motif with uh, with Kira. Because there's also this whole thing, like, one of the chapters is called Cats Love Yoshikage Kira. And it's it's maybe implying that a stray cat showed up in their, like, basement or whatever, partially because it was, like, attracted to where he was? I don't even fucking know. Hmm. Yeah, Cause and Effect is the name of the uh, TNG episode. I always forget to take off my headphones when I'm not actually listening to music in them. And then my ears get all sweaty, and I'm like, I'm not even wearing these for a reason. Ba 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 bo bo. But he also like his little bomb embellishment on that one rock also had cat ears on it. It's it's like a very it's a very thinly put down. Uh, it's 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 not really. What the fuck is this? He's got like a little face here where the eyes are music notes, and then I think that says like yuck <laughs> or suck or fuck or something. The hell? All right. So yeah, this is exactly it's exact exactly like that fucking Star Trek episode, dude. Oh, I'm like stumbling over my words because it's so similar. It's like they had like flashbacks. They're like, oh, it's deja vu. Although Hayato figures it out a lot faster. Oh, and I think, is this Kai Harada? I think this this guy might be the face to the voice that we hear a lot in the anime. Kai Harada here. He's like got a weird, you know. All right. So he's transported back. Kira's acting all smug. Kira, I think the big flaw with Bites the Dust is that Kira doesn't know when the day has been reset. That that would truly make his ab ability invincible, as if he knew, because then he could like keep track of everything or whatever. It's like if he's comfortable blowing up his enemies, why isn't he comfortable just blowing up Hayato and Shinobu and then just whatever? I guess mm, The fate thing is where it all breaks down. Like the ability would make a lot of sense. If it weren't for the fate thing, like, things that happened are fated to happen again. There's literally even a glass that breaks! In the Star Trek episode! What the fuck? The Dr. Beverly Crusher knocks over a glass every time, and there's one time where she, like, moves the glass to a different table, and she still ends up knocking it over. Holy fuck. I'm freaking out. Because this is... Star Trek ripped off JoJo, man. Because then here, she, like, always breaks this tea kettle. Oh, yeah, and so he explains it. As long as I don't cancel my ability, I can't tell what you've been doing. Like, why? Oh, yeah, and it's like there's a little killer queen that's, like, implanted in Hayato, and we see it later. Uh, when Hayato tries to kill himself, it just stops him. There's a Twilight ep Zone episode that had the same thing. <sighs> All right. Oh yeah, there's this. So there's this phone call. Okay, the fate thing makes. Okay, the other thing, I might be like the thing where it's like, why does he even blow them up? Why does it make it so it's fated that they'll blow up again? Because that would totally blow his cover. That's fine. The whole fate thing doesn't make any fucking sense. It's like things that already happened are fated to happen again. Except for, like, 90% of the things that happen. It's just, like, key events have to be met. It's, like, certain things, like, completely arbitrary things. Like the tea kettle breaking, and, uh, Kira putting the hat on Hayato, and stuff like that. Are fated to happen. But then, like, the phone call, it's, like, a wrong number, Alright, so it's presumably not Josuke the first couple mornings, and then the third morning, I guess it is Josuke, because Hayato says he made a phone call, but really all he did was pick up the phone and say this is the wrong number. I don't know, and it's like, if everything was fated to happen, it would just all happen exactly the same, and Hayato, even if he realized 
that it was happening differently, he would be, like, forced to act out and say the things that he did the first iteration, you know? And then it would just be a permanent loop. It's like, it's like a self-defeating thing. Like, hey? I guess maybe, maybe we just never see Hayato dial the phone. And it's just the fact that he, like, used getting the wrong number as, like, cover. I don't fucking know. How'd he get Josuke's phone number? Whatever. He probably gave him his phone number. It's just the fate thing makes no fucking sense. It's like, tons of things change, except for, like, a bunch of key, like, checkpoints, you know? Whatever. Uh, this is a cool panel. What the fuck? This is very- this is a very weird perspective, especially for Hayato. It just looks like he straight up doesn't have another leg. Uh, anyway. Phone book? That's very- that's very likely. Sure. That's- that's the- that's the part that I have the least issues with, is Hayato making the phone call. Like, there's- it's just the fact that, like, a bunch of other shit changes, whatever. Uh, but it, but it's like, yeah, the Pepsi sign thing happens, Hayato gets opened like a book, even though Rohan didn't actually use his ability there. It's like, should, if it was fated to happen, him and Rohan would have met. They would have met, and Rohan would have used just Heaven's Door on him. <laughs> Whatever. It's it, it, perhaps nitpicky of me. Maybe it just didn't translate well. Or something. And he puts the hat on him. Uh, Kira does this a lot. This whole thing where he, like, looks past someone's face. He does that with, uh... He did that with Hayato earlier in this chapter, and then... Or earlier in this volume. And then he does it with, uh... What's her name? In the death... In the ghost alleyway later on, too. Alright. Killer Queen. Another one bites the dust. Fate that happened once is guaranteed to happen. Anything that broke once is guaranteed to break. Mm-hmm. So Rohan's gonna blow up every single fucking time. What's going through his head? Maybe he's going, now I can't draw manga anymore. Oh, and we get this scene, right? She literally fucking sees Rohan's soul go to heaven. Or wherever. Like the Jojo afterlife. It's never explicitly said that people actually go to heaven. But they float up into the sky. <laughs> Little Rohan, right? They have, like, a weird connection. I always kind of forget that. That they, they like, knew each other when they were younger. And that that little subplot always felt a little shoehorned in. Because there's just that one chapter where they're like, Oh, by the way, Rohan knew the ghost girl and has a personal connection to it. Uh, anyway. Okay, I'm just going to read this. This morning will continue on its regular course, even with the fact that you met Rohan erased. Because you can't tell anyone about my identity. Even if you wrote it down or someone questions you, it will automatically detonate and kill them. Several others should be coming to question you after Rohan. You'll automatically kill them all for me just as well, just like a landmine. So why does he rewind time, then, if it just kills all his enemies instantly? <laughs> I don't know. I, I feel like I'm thinking myself in, like, circles here, you know? Whatever. Like, hmm? Excuse me, sorry to bother you, but you have the time. Right, he's got the picture. He, he like, asks him for the time and doesn't realize that he's the guy in the photo. It's mental torture, but for what reason? Why? All it does is give Hayato an opportunity to defeat him. You know? There's, there's, like, it's stupid, it's dumb of him. I know he didn't get to choose his ability, but, like, he should have noticed that this was a pretty big, like, loophole. Uh, yeah. Yep, Koichi is blonde. In the, in the manga. He kind of has, like, silverish hair in the anime. Okay. So the guys are here, he's freaking out. This is a very scary scene. Because they show it from Hayato's perspective and, like, you know, you see, like, Josuke and Okyasu towering over him like this. Look at this. This reminds me of part one. 
with the those panels of Dio's face just exploding out. Uh, but the, he's like, "Oh man, I can't like give give anything away, or they'll all die." And they're all like questioning him super hard. It's like, "Oh man, it sucks." Uh, so yeah, he murders all of them <laughs> while trying not to, of course. Oh, this is a cool, that's a cool art. That feels like that inspired maybe the end of, uh, the, the final iteration of Great Days, you know, where they all come in. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, we want to know why you're shooting a video, yeah, blah, 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 blah. Oh, he pretends to have, like, a broken nose, or a bleeding nose, nosebleed, whoa. And then, because, but he doesn't realize that Josuke has a healing ability, so Josuke's like, oh, yeah, your, your nose is fine, bro. All right, he punches himself, I think he actually gives himself a bloody nose. Yeah. I don't know. Clearly, I guess we can all agree it was it was possibly an error on Kira's part to be so presumptuous about it, and, and to like rewind. If he really was just rewinding time just to fuck with Hayato, then that was quite the error of his. Whatever. Uh. Anyway. Sorry, I'm just reading some of this, so sorry there's a lot of dead air. So, oh right, here's the part where Hayato does try to commit suicide with a fucking box cutter. And then a, a tiny killer queen shows up and stops him. And I guess that's the same one that appears in people's eyes. It's just, like, also there for that. <laughs> it's pretty fucked up. The whole idea of, like, trying to kill yourself and not even being able to do that. Like... I mean, in a, you know, in a desperate situation like this where you're saving a bunch of other people through your own death and then even that you can't do. It was absolutely harmless to me. Uh, so they all freak out because they've all got Killer kill Queen in their eyes. Uh, and, and all punch at nothing, I guess. <laughs> like, idiots. I'm pretty sure, sometimes I wonder if Araki digitally copies images and uses them for later because like that is the same exact I want to say render but really just drawing of Killer Queen that we saw before right? Am I wrong here? Hold on. Sorry the bitrate probably loves this. Yeah like look right here. Did he really just draw this like super consistently over and over again or does he use digital trickery to just like copy and paste it onto there? Sometimes I wonder like sometimes I've looked at instances like that, like, up close, and I, I honestly can't tell. He might just be a fucking god. Oh my god. Because I know he, like, inks all these, but I'm sure there's some sort of digital effects also being done. Are you guys hearing this? There's a classic na 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 going on outside right now. Can't tell you the last time I heard someone go na 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 na. Maybe tracing? <laughs> Destroy the children. What? Hayato's freaking out. Look at this shit. And so they've all got Killer Queen in their eye. And they all get fucking blown up. And, uh, oh, by the way, some people say that uh, there are several instances of Jotaro fake-out deaths in uh, throughout the series. And, uh, you know, nobody spoil anything, but uh, this particular one... People say that uh, Thoth in part three was predicting this moment. Because it's the exact same thing where his head like splits down the middle, you know? Probably not intentional, but whatever. Uh, so now he falls through space. It was pretty terrifying. That was another, another bit that was really well done in the anime. It was him like falling through nothingness or whatever. Okay. This is the end. No matter what I do, fate will eradicate those four like it did with Rohan. So what is the point to rewinding here? Whatever. I guess I've I guess I've driven that point home. Maybe the, I just feel like there's something I'm like overlooking here. 
that makes it make sense, but maybe not. Maybe not. Maybe he, maybe Kira just has a flawed ability. Those four are guaranteed to die unless he dies or decides to release. Oh, right, he does have the whole thing where he can, like, call off Bites the Dust. You know? It, literally every time you talk about Thoth in part three, people are like, buh, 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 I'm so fucking sorry, but I literally specifically called that out. Uh, so now he's like, I'm gonna fucking kill him. I'm gonna use... He calls this fucking thing cat grass in this translation, if I recall correctly. Right? And this is something that I don't think is in any other... Any other... Uh, like, edition of this? Like, there's no... No other translation that has this? But I'm pretty sure in this one, he calls it cat grass, and they don't do it in the anime, either. This is just, like, an, a manga-specific thing for this one translation, I think. Seriously. Look at that. Cat grass. I don't think that's a song or anything. It's weird. Um, anyway. So now we get we get him picking up the phone. I'm, I'm just trying to, like, find the moment where he, like, makes a call. But maybe we don't see it. I don't think we see it. Two days ago we received reports of about two dozen dogs and cats running together. Look at that. That's, uh, that's a reference to the cheap trick. It's pretty good continuity. This isn't the Sakurais. Yeah, it's funny. And yep, it came up in chat. I was like, I, I already know the funny, hilarious joke that people are going to make. <laughs> uh, so, right, Kira doesn't know, because his ability literally makes himself a fucking sitting duck. Uh, he breaks the china, because he doesn't know. And he spills, and this is kind of a fun little, like, causality loop here. That, uh, he, like, he spills the coffee on his hand, and Hayato kind of has it as, like, a little fuck yeah moment. But then later on in the fight, Kira gets saved by random chance by having his watch in his pocket. Which he wouldn't have had in his pocket if he hadn't got spilled by the coffee. It's like... It's kind of a fun little moment. It's like an oh fuck moment. And then he comes in and he's like, I'll protect you forever, mom. And she's like, fucking... Fucking... Huh? She's like, what was that? And then he look at that. And he's turning into a main character. Fucking... Huh? And she's like, tee hee, I like my son now. Everything breaks eventually. Neat. Alright, so this shit's going down. He's got the plant. And he's gonna shoot Kira with it. Because Kira has to put on his hat. Because Kira's own ability screws him over completely. Whatever. I guess he, he was right about to win here. Because he was going to deactivate Bites the Dust and make the change permanent. You know? It's weird. You know, I'm, I'm going to Google cat grass. I think I did once and it just was nothing. There is a kind of grass that I guess you feed to cats. Okay, there's also just a kind of grass called cat grass. Oh, it's the stuff that you, like, when you're walking past it on a walk, you, like, run your hand through it and you pick up all the seeds. You know? So, now we have, by the way, cat plant has fucking metamorphosized, or metamorphized, I don't know what the proper way to say that is, actually. It's, like, different now. It just changes the way it looks for some reason. Uh, 
Uh, so now he's just sitting here trying to get him to come out from behind the tree so he can use the fucking, like, Pokemon on him. Uh, but instead he steps behind the tree and he's like, oh, no, I'll just be super careful and Hayato's super heartbroken. I don't know, this is maybe another thing that was conveyed, tension that was conveyed better in the anime. But then, uh, once again, Kira's cockiness gets the best of him. And he, he's like, oh, he, he looks like a little fucking frightened dog. I have nothing to worry about. And it's like a double-triple fake-out, because then he gets shot in the moment of weakness, and then <laughs> it turns out he's fine. <laughs> cool panel. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. He's like, you're fucking dead. Uh, isn't it like... I, he must have said something about it, but... Uh, there's, n there's not a ton of air... Or there's not, not a ton of uh, sunlight to activate the plant right now, but I guess there's enough. They must have mentioned it. Take route to, different route to school? Oh, right, and Kira just fucking straight up decks him in the face. But then, uh, uh, more kind of like weird fake outs, because like, tell me this panel is not indicating that he made an impact on Hayato's face. But then it's like, no, the Killer Queen protected him, he's actually fine. It's like when Jotaro pretended to shoot himself and there was like a little red poof next to his head. And it's like, no, he wait, he caught the bullet. It's like, okay, what was the fucking poof? What was the fucking poof then? <laughs> and then he gets fucking Yote because Kira had fate and he had luck on his side. But really he was just lucky up until this point. And it, it really screwed him over because it made him, like, overconfident. I kind of agree. I, I, I remember x Forts at one point saying that Kira kind of gets less interesting when he uh, becomes the melon head. <laughs> and it's true. He just, acts, he just acts very, like, irrationally after this point. Or around this point. Oh, yeah, and he accurately predicts the amount of times that Hayato has repeated the morning. Oh yeah, and, and even in the end, the thing that actually gives away his identity is him bragging. It's just like him walking into the attic and being like, Phew, I'm so glad that my fucking fake son doesn't know I'm a murderer. And now he's like, I can't lose unless I tell someone my ability. By the way, my ability is Bites the Dust and my name's Yoshikage Kira. Or whatever, don't tell anybody my ability and name. And he's like, yeah, I fucking said it. I'm Yoshikaga Kira. Yeah, what of it? Fucking say it, bitch. And then he realizes Josuke's here. And he's like cupping his... Is that supposed to be like listening ear? You know, if you cup your hand, it's a lot easier. He's like pushing it forward with his wrist. I don't know, maybe he just had, the, had, had a little bit, bit of gunk behind his ear. So they're like, hey, I know that name. <laughs> and then they start whooping the shit out of him. And now we're in like the fight proper, which I, I don't even really have much to say about this fight. It's really good. Like I said earlier, Josuke like uses his interesting ability in interesting ways throughout the part. And he sort of like uses things that he's learned from past fights in this one. This is like considered one of the best final fights just because it's uh, it it's so relevant to the rest of the part, you know. Ain't nothing gonna be tranquil about that mug of yours once I'm done with you. Oh yeah, and Rohan goes, Ugh! oh the rain went down my back. Oh what a silly fake out. Also, did we skip the line where uh, Jotaro says the rain sounded like Josuke, or something like that, or the rain sounded like Rohan? I, whatever. It's in the anime. There's there's an infamously poorly translated line. Maybe it's coming up. Where he's like, I thought the rain sounded like Josuke. Right, they, it's coming up very soon here, because they haven't got his attention yet. So they're like, holy shit, the, like one of the first pictures that Rohan took actually had Kira in it. Who would have fucking thought? <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, paws. Don't let his fucking killer queen get its paws on you. There's another cat reference. Oh, yeah, and they're getting payback for Shigechi. You guys remember Shigechi? This is a very, uh, sort of Dio-esque walk. Can, can you kids shut the fuck up? Can you shut the fuck up? Oh, my God. By the way, I love how Crazy Diamond looks. Like, the color scheme is really fucking sick. It stands out so well. Like, I would not want to read part four uh, black and white, you know? I'm forced to read more recent part eight chapters. And we'll see uh, Dead Man's Questions. Those of you who have never seen black and white manga or black and white JoJo's before, you'll get that experience. It's a little harder to tell what's going on. I'm gonna be honest. Mmm. He fucking kicks him in the face and says, Dora! I remember that in the anime. Uh, so, guess that's a tranquil life for you. I'm running circles around you. Uh, and it turns out that he stole cat grass. I think this is one of the last times we'll ever see it referred to as cat grass. And uh, now he's got his weird air bubbles where fucking he can touch... So the rule with his bomb is whatever he touches, he can turn into a bomb. So he can touch, like, hardened air? And turn that into an explosive? <laughs> it's good shit. Uh, and, he, and he just happens to have a little stomach, like, parking garage thing to store it in. How convenient. What if he didn't have that little hole? He just had to, like, hold it awkwardly. So he's like, ah, you know, everything seemed to be going against me, but actually it gave me all the power in the world, or whatever. Oh, look at this, look at this. I was like, I wonder if it's in the translation notes, and it literally is. Whenever people refer to Stray Cat in this volume, it's written that the character's blah, blah, blah. But when Hayato refers to it, the characters are subtitled Nekogusa, meaning cat grass, while for Kira it's subtitled as Stray Cat. Fuck yeah! I was like, maybe it'll say, because they have translation notes. Also, in the original Japanese, Kira's last line on the page is when you write out to bring life, you get destiny. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's some puns in wordplay that uh, don't really translate perfectly. Okay, we are on the last volume of uh, part four. You ready to like for it to just screech to a halt? <laughs> like, the fight ends, and then it's like, also the part's over. Bye. <laughs> Alright. Anyway, that's that's good to know. I, I never knew that about the cat grass thing. And it makes sense. He has, like, his own little name for it, because he doesn't know it's called Stray Cat. Okay. Fucking iconic thing of Josuke about to fucking punch and or make out with Kira. <laughs> Bomb and air! How on earth can such a powerful synergy exist? It's like he got a Broken Isaac combination. You know, he got like Ludovico with uh, Dr. Fetus. <laughs> oh yeah, and Okiasu got blowed up, but it's fine. He's literally too stupid to die. And then there's this little like moment where he has like a, a fake out with him. Where he's like, oh, you know, maybe I turned... Or, I think Hayato is like, maybe he turned Okiasu's corpse into a bomb. So here we see Josuke using... He uses so many techniques that he, he learned in other battles. Like this shit that he learned in uh, the Highway Star arc where he punches the floor and like reforms it to make a wall. He uses that shit. And then later on we get to see him use some shit that he used in the Rat arc where he like fires something... With his, uh, with his finger. Where was it? I must have missed it. Oh, here we go. I thought, it's nothing. I just thought the rain sounded a little like Josuke. <laughs> <sighs> That's good. That's a classic line. He must have slept in or something. Well, he kind of, he did, he was gonna sleep in. He should have been fated to sleep in because things that happen are fated to happen again. But no, it just changed. Whatever. Uh, we see Josuke get kind of blowed up, but like not really. It's like an indirect hit. You have no escape anymore. Yeah, and he, he reveals that he can make 
timed explosives, or he can make, uh, or he can make ones that he detonates with his like thumb, or he can make ones that just pop when they hit you. And this one, this is such a cool moment. This is like some true like. There's no there's no jankery to this. It's just badass. Is that Josuke runs directly through this bubble because he knows Kira can't detonate it when it's close enough to him, so he just charges right through it. That's pretty fucking good. That's a great moment. Uh, anyway. Okasu's body might have been turned into a bomb. Right, he, like, sees... Hayato glimpses Kira getting this, like, fuck yeah, go touch his body kind of, like, face. And then he's like, ah, shit. <laughs> Okasu got fucked up, by the way. Now look at, look at this kawaii motherfucker. Killer Queen's posing right now. Oh, yeah. So, I don't think they even, they even mention it here. He still has a sheer heart attack. He just doesn't use it because it's completely useless against Josuke. Because Josuke can just fix it back to him. He can, like, they established before, he can just punch it and it just returns to Kira. <laughs> Which is pretty funny. There is something a little Dragon Ball-esque about Killer Queen. Uh, so anyway. He's like, yeah, yeah, we're at a, like a Mexican standoff here. You can either choose to heal your guy or fuck me up. And then Hayato waits until like literally the moment Josuke's about to punch him to be like, oh, by the way, I have proof. And he uses, he uses facts and logic to destroy Kira. And he touches it himself. And, and this is one of the most bullshit moments in the whole part. Hayato gets obliterated. He gets completely, like, reduced to nothing. And then Josuke puts him back together by punching, like, the smoke where he was. Like, fuck that, man. Come on. That's ridiculous. That's always one that I've called bullshit at. And I know they got magic powers or whatever, but, like, <clears throat> he was dead. He was fucking dead. Like, he could fix his body, but Hayato would still be dead. They established earlier with his grandpa. His grandpa got, like, internal lacerations. And and his he died, and he, like, fixed all his wounds, but he was still dead. It's like, what about Hayato? His fucking brain was reduced to a fine red mist. And then he just got fucking taken back? What? Huh? Okay, well. Here we are. Let's just... It, it just works. Let's just accept that that happened. Uh, Josuke is kind of being a little baby about this. He's like, come on, just open your fucking eyes. Oh, and we get this iconic pose and little rant. Where he's talking about how to, like, angle his bombs. And he does a little trigonometry lesson here. This was, I think they took the, like, trigonometry bit out of the anime, unfortunately. But this is, like, an infamous moment. Very, like, Poochie-esque, honestly. Uh, we're gonna combine our powers and kick some ass like we always do. When does, when does Josuke ever combine powers with Okyasu? I'm trying to, like, think. Whatever. Okyasu, that would require Okyasu using his stand <laughs> in anything but, like, the chili pepper arc. Anyway. Uh, I'm sorry, I've got my, like, wrist brace on, and it's getting real uncomfortable. I'm gonna take it off. I, I can never wear this thing for, like, too long. Except at night, and it doesn't bother me. Okay. And so the air bubble's here, Josuke's, like, dragging Okyasu's corpse. He's like, yeah, he's fine, he's gonna wake up, it's fine. Oh, right, he uses a blade of his own blood to cut the bubble in half. <laughs> Again... I don't think that's how compressed air works, but sure, it's, I guess it's just like a, I don't know, it's like a ball of jelly or something. It should just, like, should the blade not have just passed directly through it? You know? He cut the air bullet. Yeah, that is, that is like when the air deflated when you stabbed it with your compass. That is exactly like that, and it didn't make sense then either. 
water jet cutter. <laughs> that's like a that's like a part one or two name move, you know. Oh yeah, and he's like, now you're just now you just have two bullets shooting at you. Oh yeah, so he he tugged himself away from the explosion using Crazy Diamond because he had bits of the road inside his body from previous explosions. <laughs> Do you ever shut up, Hayato? Hayato's a little bit annoying in the anime. A little bit. Just because he has so many things to say and it's a kid in anime. You know? <laughs> Alright. Uh, the rain has stopped. Oh, right, there's this fucking scene. Yeah, dude, I always forget this happens. There's a scene of Kira apologizing to Kosaku Kawajiri's boss on the phone and being insanely humble. Being like, I'm the worst, I'm so sorry, I fucked up, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, ah, I hate you, Kawajiri. And then there's this fucking guy who's, like, passing by... And he, like, sees panties on the bush. And then he picks up the panties and then he explodes. So somehow Kira, like, knew this guy was, like, a peeping Tom. Got the panties from inside after seeing them there. Like, clearly he saw them here. This guy comes by. He somehow gets them from inside, I guess, with his stand? And then just does it just to spite this fucking guy. And then, his, and then his eyeballs are all that's left, and he's like, lucky me! What a fucking, like, what the fuck, Araki? Huh? <laughs> anyway. Okiasu's dead. He finally gave up, like, right before Aki, Okiasu, Akiasu is about to actually <laughs> get up and start being alive again. Okay, so there's this whole bit where they're inside somebody's house, and they have all this shit with the air bullets. I don't, I don't really have much to say about this. Look at that fucking pose. He looks like a goon. <laughs> uh, but they, yeah, they use this ashtray and, like, smoke from cigarettes to, uh... I guess Josuke just had a whole pack of cigarettes, and he has this fucking insane lighter. We'll see, we'll get a better look at it later, but it's a huge lighter to, to be able to see the invisible air bubbles. So he's outside the house, he's using, uh, they don't know this yet, but the dad is like floating around on a photo inside the, uh, inside the house. And he's giving them instruct. he's giving Kira instructions over the phone on like where he is. And this is like the iconic crazy diamond moment. He smashes the flower pot and he mixes a little bit of his own dried blood. Or it's a, I think it's a little bit of Kira's blood maybe? With, uh, with this, like, glass thing, and he shapes it into a heart and fires it at him. Which is another great embellishment, is shaping it into a heart. You know? Yeah, that's his own blood. And, he, and he, they sort of... I, this is an acceptable loophole, I think. It's like, once his blood is outside of his own body and it's dried up, it's no longer part of him. I think that works. That works for me. And so he, like, fused his own blood with the glass from this flower pot, and that's, like, the weapon that takes down Kira, which is super cool. He does it a couple times. <laughs> uh, so then he sees that Kira dropped a phone. Right, he attracts the dried blood on Kira's shirt to the dried blood on in, inside the thing, I think. Uh, <clears throat> and then <laughs> Hayato's like, the glass shards won't work anymore. You can't expect it to fool him twice with the same trick. And then he kind of just does do that. <laughs> but look at this fucking lighter. This is like, uh, this is like a desk lighter. This is like for something with the, on your, like, table. But Josuke just had it in his pocket. For some reason. Like, what is that monstrosity? Oh, and this is the most extra thing ever. In order to show that the dad is inside Hayato's pocket... He fucking lights Hayato's pocket on fire. 
It's like, you, you, could you not have just said, Josuke, you fucking weirdo, could you not have just said, by the way, the guy's in your fucking pocket. He had to light it on fire without telling Hayato what he was doing. Huh? <clears throat> oh, yeah, and here's another sort of... It's similar to the previous moment where he ran through the bubble because it was too close to Kira. But here he's just on the phone pretending to be his dad and saying, Oh, yeah, you haven't hit him yet. Don't detonate it yet. Which is, again, so extra. He could have just dodged it and also said that, but no. He just let it pass right over him because he knew. Anyway. I guess, yeah, Kira would have heard if... It, I guess that makes sense. But no. But he talks about it. The old man in the picture was trying to protect Yoshikage Kira. And he's holding the phone right goddamn there. He would have heard that. Whatever. So anyway, they trick Kira into killing his own dad. This is a very relieving moment because the dad character was really annoying. <laughs> it was like a big bugaboo. And then Kira gets hit by the same move twice. Although it's sort of because he was like stunned from his yeah, the knowledge that he just killed his own ghost dad picture. <laughs> He's like, ah, shit, this sucks. Oh, great pose, Josuke. Great pose. Bring out your killer queen. This is like the big hype moment in the anime. Um, yeah, fuck yeah. Some people say that the, the wounds in this fight correlate to the wounds in uh, the, the flashback, by the way, and that's literally just not true. Like, the wounds are just not the same. He's, like, bloody. He's, like, got blood on his face. That's the only similarity. Anyway. He punches him. He th There's this recurring thing of stands, like, cracking when they get defeated or when they're, like, weakened. Like, that happened with the world as well, and it happens with other ones too. It doesn't happen all the time, it just happens sometimes. But it, that's sort of a thing. Oh! <laughs> he just, he's just screaming. Alright, he's like, I'm about to lose. But wait, the fucking cat grass protected him just to be a dick. With the, like, with the, like, the invincible air bubbles. <laughs> Uh, and then they have one little, like, desperate last encounter. What is this fucking, like, yellow thing? What am I looking at here? What is this? What is that? Oh, that was, that's his hand. That's the hand swipe, I bet. I was, like, fucking, like, big, there's a cornucopia here. And we get this weird, like, dorky Okyasu pose. But it's good. He's, he's a dork, so it works out. And then he has this whole bit where he's like, I, I don't even know where this shit goes, which is very similar to uh, Vanilla Ice. He's like, I don't even know where shit I erase goes, but it's there now. <laughs> which is pretty badass. This is a great moment in the anime as well. And he talks about how he, he this is a brief glimpse into the afterlife, I guess. Because he kind of has like a, he has like a Harry Potter moment. Where he like meets, he meets his big brother in the afterlife. They kind of ex expanded on this in the anime too. Like, visually, at least. And he's like, no, I don't really want to die right now. I want to I want to go back to Morio and help. And then he does. And then that's it. <laughs> so that's the end of the story. No. Someone said massive arm. He kind of does have a massive, long arm. See, Araki's uh, such a weird artist. Because, like, it is it's a very bizarre pose. But it kind of makes it work. It's like, that's the sort of thing I didn't, didn't even really notice. So he's got like a weird arm like that. But it's like the energy, like the, it kind of has like a motion to it, you know? Alright. And I guess it, it might partially have been that Josuke's like ability brought him back too. But no. Oh yeah, and he uses his suck teleport ability. This is like, Okyasu becomes useful by finally deciding to use his fucking stand. Uh, and they suck cat plant out of his abdomen. And they're like, oh, look over there. Oh, everyone noticed Yoshikage Kira being totally defeated. And he's like, well, this sucks. <laughs> and Koichi has like a little 
And it could, no, Hayato has a little speech about how all the righteous spirits have converged on you. You're not going to live through this. And Josuke, <laughs> Jotaro finally figures it out. He's like, oh, I guess this is the guy. Okay, I guess I'll beat the shit out of him now. Hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, he just falls down and freaks out. Everybody's here. Everyone's here! Ba 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 Sakurai! Okay. Uh, but then he has this one, this is like the Incredibles when they go back home and Syndrome is there and he's got the baby. But he takes this nurse lady hostage and implants bites the dust into her by telling her his ability, or his name rather. And he also tells her a little too much about other things, about how he loves hands. This is the, the infamous big reveal that he gets erections from looking at the Mona Lisa's hands. This is his thing. It's like, throughout the part, you're like, okay, so what's the deal with the hands, you know? Is it like a fetish? Maybe he's like, he's got like some arrangement with like a demon that has, that, that like needs to be satiated with hands or something. Nope. It gets him dick hard. It gets his cock, his little, his little Japanese cock goes like, Durr. sorry, I didn't mean to say little as in he's poorly endowed. But he, he just gets rock hard for hands. That's the whole thing. And he, he was inspired by the Mona Lisa. <laughs> In the anime, they even show young Kira opening a book and, like, blushing or something. And then he starts licking her hands and, like, rubbing his face on it. He's like, I've killed, yeah, I've killed 48 women with pretty hands. Which is pretty fucking insane. Back when I did that video that was, like, counting the amount of hands that are lost in, uh, in all the different parts of JoJo. Part 4 was the clear winner, because I also included the 48 women that he killed and cut off presumably only one of their hands, although he might have cut off both. I wonder if there was ever a situation where he was like, oh, it's twins, because I got two hands from this one lady. Hmm. Someone said that the button appears on his thumb for the final fight. But I'm not seeing it here. He just has, like, his imaginary button. There was, for, like, one panel during the Cats Love Yoshikage Kira arc, he had an actual red button on his hand. I, d I don't even know. But yeah, this is a great panel. Famous. Yatazo! This is, but this is just him, this is a delusion of his, as we later learn. He's actually, he, he thought that he just activated by the dust and went back in time, but really, he just died and uh, got sent to the ghost alley. And he's like, teehee, I beat them all. But oh wait, birds are flying through me, and also my watch is still broken. And also the girl that I murdered, like, 30 years ago, is here, <laughs> haunting me. <laughs> 15 years, okay. He doesn't even remember her, which is weird. He, it's like it's like she shows him his, her hands and he's like, oh, I remember you. <laughs> yeah. And she reveals, this is weird because she's a ghost too, right? How is she passing through him? Whatever. I mean, that's just a thing ghosts can choose to do. Uh, but she's like, all right, you're dead. You're fucked, bro. You actually got screwed. You didn't, you didn't activate Bites the Dust. You got fucking screwed. Everyone came together. This is a, another good climactic moment. Rohan's just kind of there, but uh, Koichi helps with his, his fully upgraded ability to disable Kira's hand and keep it pinned to the ground. And then Jotaro just fucking whoops his ass. And it's a great payoff for Koichi's little like arc throughout the part. And then you get to have one more like badass Jotaro moment where he just whoops the shit out of him. And I'm pretty sure they play the Stardust Crusaders theme in the anime when this happens. Pretty fucking good. He gets absolutely destroyed. Oh, look at that group pose. <laughs> it's like the person taking the picture was like, everybody hunch down. This, this camera's got a very weird lens. And they're like, all right, we can hunch down. But then it turned out there was actually plenty of space. Was it there? Oh, bap, bap, bap. Oh, God. Weird. It's like uh, two panels in the entire thing. 
You missed the button. You missed me seeing the button, my friend. Two... That is two. That is... Count them two single... Two entire panels. In the whole thing, I'm pretty sure. That... That he has an actual red button there. And the other time it was on his thumb. The other time it was on his thumb. Two. Like, what? <laughs> it changed places. And it only shows up for two panels. It's gone, like, right here. Whatever. Whatever. It's... It, I Okay, I'm thinking maybe it's like a... Uh, a there, there's a certain character in part seven that has a similar ability where it's like he has like a mental trigger for it. And it's like maybe we're just seeing it from Kira's perspective there. But the button being on inconsistent, like one time it was on the tip of his thumb, the other time it was like on his, the side of his pointer finger. Heh. Aye. And this is the iconic part that everybody like goofs about. I don't, I don't know. I get it that it's like kind of weird. But everybody, like, penis musics about this part. Yes, he gets run over by an ambulance. That is the last thing that happens. Is that random coincidence, which was for so long on his side, just fucks him over in the end. It's like he could have survived at least. But uh, he just got totally screwed. And this is something that people, like, there are certain things that people just, like, cannot wait to spoil for people. For some reason, this is just one of those things. Like, I'm glad that I personally watched part four first before I was, like, in, like heard of the talk to anybody about it, even. But, like, for some pe for some reason, this is just something that people, oh, they just, oh, I can't wait to, oh, they're, like, red in the face their entire lives because they want to tell people that Kira gets killed by an ambulance in part four. It's, I don't know, it's just a weird thing I've noticed. Anyway, but he gets killed. In the anime, they show his head, like, spinning around, too. It's pretty, uh, pretty graphic. It's, it's not, like, too gory, but it's, like, ugh. It's a little yo-yo moment. They show it for just, like, a tiny second, and then they cut away. Uh, there are, there are certain other things that, that people just cannot, like, that is, that is one thing that is the most obnoxious about Jojo fans is they just need to spoil everything because they need to prove that they know the, the manga, they know the anime or whatever. I don't even know. It's it's very obnoxious, honestly. But uh, now we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna see Hayato get fucking depressed later on. There's I think maybe in the anime only, or it might show up in the manga. It's like a hella depressing scene where they're like, well, we won't start eating until our dad comes back home. And Hayato's like, yeah. And I'm like, and then they starve to death. But, uh, now flashback to this. Uh, wounds on my back, eh? Or, right, no, 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 no. This was, this was like the one exception. She didn't get her hand cut off. He, like, stabbed her in the back. And it was like, earlier they were gonna have this whole thing where he had like a super distinctive wound on your back and that's how you know it's him is that he, he, does, he like kills you in a very specific way but I think later on that was changed to be the hand so then she still has a wound on her back and is, keeps both of her hands because of that little inconsistency there's the dog shit yeah you really can't see it here like you would think you'd be able to see it but from the way she's like posing here but whatever Would have been cooler if Raimi had a hook hand. <laughs> anyway. So she's trying to trick him into turning around in the alleyway that you're not supposed to turn around. And just by, like, crazy cosmic coincidence, again, they have this one last, like, fake out where he's like, Ah, I know there's a place where you're not supposed to turn around. And, uh, this is a really cool bit. He turns back into his original form with his, like, blonde hair. And they did this so well in the anime where... This, this is the other shot I was talking about where he looks past your face. They have this bit where it's, like, he, it shows his, like, his melon head hair head when he's behind her. And then he, like, pushes his face forward. And as it, like, moves behind her head, he turns into old Kira. Really well done. Here it just kind of jump cuts to a panel where you see the, like, thing of hair. 
In the anime, I literally didn't even notice that that happened, though, until somebody pointed it out to me, that that happened. You know? Uh, so, let's... By the way, let's just start counting the amount of times Kira loses his hand, or, or gets fucked over by hands. Because here he gets his hand fucking bitten off by a dog, and then he gets taken away by hands that also break off his other hand. <laughs> And, and he gets fucked. What the fuck? I uh, Blow them all up. <laughs> so I think if you, like, look, you can see, like, yeah, there's, there's his hand getting torn off there. And I think you can see Killer Queen's hand getting torn off somewhere else as well. Maybe not. Maybe that's just in the anime. Pretty funny. He gets, he gets wrecked by the thing that gave, that made him erect. <laughs> That's, man, if I had thought that joke out better, that would have been a banger, but I had to, like, stumble through it. Uh, oh yeah, and he's like, where are they gonna take me? She's like, fucked if I know, you're not gonna be happy there. And he's like, oh, whatever. And she kind of had to be a badass that doesn't look at explosions there, or else she'd be in the explosion. And then they can ascend to heaven, and everybody's just here now, I guess. So, part four's ending comes out of nowhere. We're probably like five pages from the end of the part now, now that Kira is dead. But it's like, oh, by the way, everybody else shows up. Mikitaka is here. I guess he left the, uh, the, the phone, or the, the pylon. Look at their faces. <laughs> I guess he left the pylon. But the, everybody here, even people who don't give a shit about Raimi, are like here to see her off. Which is kind of funny. Even the fucking baby. And then, oh, here's this, like, sad-ass fucking scene where Shinobu and Hayato are about to eat dinner, and she's like, oh, yeah, I'll eat with Dad once he comes home, and Hayato's like, I will too. And then they died. But I, I guess I, it's, it's quite a, like, desperate note that they leave Hayato on, but I, you can only assume that he pulled through and, and made something of his life, but that's the last we ever see of him, is weeping at his table. Over at the table over the loss of his dad. Like, what? He's not at the table, never mind. Fake gamer. Oh, yeah, and then we get the uh, Koichi opened up the part, and he's gonna close the part about how the, the town got scarred, but the scars will heal. Even though, you know, the scars will be grown over, rather. Maybe they'll never heal, but uh, the town will move on. Which is just a little, a little conclusion. It's, it's like, it feels very rushed. We get like one page where it's like, oh, by the way, the city will be fine, but some wounds will never heal. And it's like, okay, we're not going to get any more. We're not even going to like see what Koichi is like doing. So I like that in the part four anime, they had a bunch more cutaways where they showed what the other characters end up doing. Because here it just gives conclusions to like, I think there's like a page where it like, it goes, oh, by the way, bam, 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 bam. Like, here's the fates of all these people. Yeah. But uh, but really, y you get barely anything at the end of this part. It, it, it does feel rushed. It feels like there should be one more volume or one more chapter after this, at least, you know? How can this pain be cured? I don't know whether it will become fatal to this town or whether it will fade away eventually. I do not know. And that's not the last we hear of Koichi, weirdly enough. We will see him in the beginning of part five. Uh, but we see Joseph and Jotaro having a convo. It, at least important that we get a we get a talk between these guys because they're two past main JoJo's. The youth of this town have a golden spirit, which is weird. He should have said diamond. He should have said diamond, right? <laughs> golden is part five. Whatever. Blessed with the radiance of justice, I saw fortune with jo within Josuke and his friends. As long as they. It's there, they'll be fine. And this is something we get that we see this, the genera generational aspect is so strong, like, we get to see this actually get passed on in later parts, and we see the legacy and the golden spirit sort of get transferred to everyone else. And, uh, and then Josuke fucking, like, dupes Joseph one last time. He uses his ability in a goofy way one last time. He gives him the torn photo. And he's like, oh, I've got the little edge of that photo 
right here in my pocket so I can steal your wallet when you put that photo in there. <laughs> ah, what a golden spirit he has. He literally just stole a bunch of money from his dad. <laughs> like, what the fuck? A pretty, pretty funny moment to end it on. Nice, lighthearted bit. And this is the last we ever see of uh, Joseph. Oh, putting in his Walkman. Nice. Just like the end of uh, part three. Oh yeah. So this is the tiny. This is the tiny little page of like. Oh, by the way, this also happened. Stray Cat took a legging to Okiyasu's father. The two are peacefully living together. Okiyasu thinks this is fine too. Okay, so remember that arc with the, the father that couldn't get healed? That just never got resolved. Remember the invisible baby who we were going to find the mother of and figure out why it's a stand user? Never figured that out. <laughs> hmm. But at least Jotaro wrote a fucking doctorate about a starfish. Uh, uh, but yeah, Joseph adopts Shizuka, and this is... We never see... Shizuka again after this point. The family went through another chaotic period. It is unknown whether this was the cause, but Mr. Joestar had been growing dull, has recently returned to good health. Okay. And then he presumably died between this and, like, part five or part six. Weird. And then classic shot. <laughs> the hip. From Josuke. And he's got a massive arm in this one, too. Classic, like, sassy pose. With the boat in the background, and that's how it ends. And and you may notice in the anime, that pose was transposed, ha, to a different part of town. Here he does it on the docks. I think in the show he does it just on the streets. And so for most people, the summer of 1999 passed unremarkably, much as any other summer would. Dun, dun, dun. And that's it. That This is, this is our last glimpse of <laughs> old Joseph from far, far away. Uh, but what a great part. Neat. One final thank you. Yeah, whatever, Bracketeer. Alright, but that's that's the end of part four. It's kind of rushed. It's not... Like, that's, that's one bit where I'm kind of like, hmm. <laughs> huh? Like, it's, it is good. It's a good part. The ending doesn't need to be this long, drawn-out, like, Return of the King thing. But at the same time, it is, uh... It's it's a little abrupt. It just kind of comes out of nowhere, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess, oh, it's over. All right, <laughs> neat. <laughs> but yeah, there goes there goes one of the best JoJo's, Josuke. We're never gonna see him again. Uh, but now we're gonna read DMQ Dead Man's Questions. So if you have not read this, I would suggest stopping this right now and going to if you're watching the vod, just pause the vod, or if you're gonna. Whatever your plan is, if you haven't read it, I would suggest it. Don't spoil yourself on it, because it's kind of spoilery. Just try to find, like, a scan of it somewhere, and then come back to this if you want to. Because it's a, it's a good read. It's very short. It's just one volume. Uh, it's, I think it's, like, three chapters. Uh, so, and if you if you don't care, or if you've already read it, then keep watching. Just look online. Just search, like, Dead Man's Questions, Scans... It's, there, I don't think there's any colored scans, unfortunately, so uh, you're going to have to read black and white. But here we go. I'm diving in. This first panel, I think, is colored by Iraqi, or this first page. Uh, it, it only has spoilers for part four. And it's uh, there are things in this that you could get spoiled for, is what I was really trying to say. Anyway. So here we are, Dead Man's Questions. I really like this one-off. There are several one-offs that I'll be going through. Uh, there's, like, one for part six called, like, uh, Fly High with Gucci or something that's, like, almost nothing. But uh, this is this is one of the best one-offs, I think. Uh, which I might as well, now that we're here, I'm going to spoil it. I'm going to say the spoiler, which is that this is Kira in the afterlife. Uh, and this is this is his eternal punishment or whatever. Barbie, forty years old, Oak Tree Hill child murder case. Prescription establishes at midnight. What the fuck does prescription establishes at midnight mean? Uh, so he's basically living as a ghost, and he has to like work around all these like crazy arbitrary rules of being a ghost. 
and he doesn't really remember much about his previous life. This is such a cool artwork, by the way. He doesn't remember basically anything about his previous life except his name. And he has to, he does like weird missions for this old monk. <laughs> uh, this is, this is a really cool cover art. It just shows all these things that are relevant to the, uh, the comic. There's the monk lady. And he's doing a cat's cradle, which I guess is another cat reference? I don't even fucking know. And he's got this crazy outfit with like, uh, I don't even know what to call these, like, hatch marks on it and a crazy bowler hat. But here we are. Here we are in black and white JoJo mode. I hope you're ready. Uh, so we basically... We get a very whimsical look at Kira. Oh, he's got, like, a skull in the, on the back of his head, too. It's kind of like Frylock's jewel in Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Uh, but yeah. So... He's very oblivious. He's kind of like, uh... Like, here, he says, there's a book that says, The Elephant Who Lost His Nose. He's like, now, why in the world would he lose his nose? He's, like, very childlike and curious. Which is kind of, kind of funny. Uh, but he's finding a bunch of arbitrary things. He's got to, like, uh, that guy kind of looks like Kira's dad, honestly. He's, he's trying to find a bunch of, he's got, like, a, he needs to find a picture, a phone, like, a knife, and some other things. He kind of, ghosts in this world kind of have, like, vampire rules. Where they have, like, a bunch of arbitrary rules that they have to uh, follow or else they get fucked. So one of the things is that he has to get invited in. A fruit knife. <laughs> uh, so he's, he cuts out this picture. He, like, tears out very precisely this picture of this guy and holds it up to a peephole in order to try to convince this person he's a delivery man in order to get, like, invited inside. Which, I don't know why there was a picture of a delivery man, like, checking his phone in the mail or in the newspaper, but whatever. Checking, like, a little notepad, I guess. But, uh, this is, basically the point is, this is his eternal punishment, is he, he never gets to be restful. He's always gotta be on his toes. He's always gotta be worrying about how other people affect him. And, uh, this is, like, where it takes you. This is where the hands take you in that alleyway. Presumably. Maybe it does something different for each person. I don't even fucking know. It's like, wouldn't it be funny if he saw a cheap trick around here, you know, just wandering around being like, oh, help. Whatever. Uh, so, he's talking to like, I don't even remember why he has to get into this lady's apartment. I think it's just that he's trying to get a phone or something like that. But they argue for a while. Yeah, he's trying to get a phone. And she's really paranoid, and he's like, here, I'll just open the mail slot, because you need to sign for this. And she's like, fine, whatever, and then he's like, good enough for me, I'm a ghost, I can go through the mail slot. <laughs> That's a cool panel. Uh, somebody was saying that they, they were sad that this part didn't get animated, which I'm also sad. Like, Purple Haze Feedback would be really cool to see animated, but this would be more feasible. Like, this is like a feasible one-off, and... It actually has art to, like, base itself off of, rather than Purple Haze Feedback, which just has a few character sketches, you know? Oh yeah, and he can't touch people. He always has to, like, dodge around people, or else he gets, like, fucked up. Oh yeah, and she's freaking out. She's, like, naked. She just got out of the shower. Oh yeah, and he can, like, phase through walls once he has permission, which is pretty cool. This is like, uh, there's a, there's a cover to this. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see it at the end. But there's a, there's a cool, like, cover page to this that I think was, like, the volume that all of these, uh, bits were, like, bound in. That shows him, like, s sinking into the floor, and it looks so awesome. Oh, yeah, and he took, I guess, was the, was the book about the elephant that lost its nose already here, just by coincidence? Huh. Okay, but this is, like... Getting close to the big reveal. Before I died and came to be only a spirit, my central value was that of numbers. To earn a higher number of money than others. To have a lower number than others on the graduating list. One minute quicker via bullet train, one year younger. What should my values be now, in order for my heart to find peace? I don't want to ride fast trains, and I don't need hair growth drugs. 
but he's most curious about the fucking elephant that lost its nose. <laughs> and so here we get a bit of ghost lore. I'm so excited. This is the ghost lore in JoJo. Uh, he can't, he can't like have his own place. He can't have peace. And there are other ghosts around that serve as a reminder that if you're not careful, you could get like basically disabled as a ghost and just have to like wander around as a head. And he says, yeah, people, people like have to spend their entire existence hiding in street poles and trees, just trying to, uh, trying to stay out of the way. Because if anybody bumps into them, it just like deletes that part of their body. Basically. This guy's fucking brain is exposed. Which is pretty fucked up. It's like a pretty surreal and like horrific dream world. It's kind of like, or not dream world, a uh, ghost world. It's like Requiem for a Dream, which is what made me think of that word. Alright, so he can't even use the fucking phone. I think he's trying to, his job is to like kill a guy. There's a certain guy that he needs to kill. Oh! And, uh... I don't know if I mentioned this. This was ages ago. This was like six months ago when I did the podcast bit that had this in it. But when Rohan and Koichi are in this one like random alleyway, when they're in the ghost alleyway, they see a doghouse that says Rocky by it or like rock or something. And it's this dog and it's this house. So that, that one random cutaway in part four actually got slightly elaborated on in this. Which is pretty crazy. I think that's pretty neat. Oh yeah, and he gets spooked by the dog. He tries to get out of the way. Because dogs can see ghosts, I guess. And he falls straight through the lady. And he's like, ah, oh, fuck. And he gets like an arm and a leg cut off, I think. Something like that. His body gets fucked up. And, oh yeah, and she felt it. She was like, oh, I think a fucking ghost just fell through me. <laughs> My arm and leg, and just when I have a job to finish. So Kira has now lost his arm three times. Lest we forget, Kira, human being, lost his arm three times. Because he, he, he lost both his arms in life, and then he became a ghost and lost his arm again. What the fuck? It's also very cruel that, uh... He he doesn't even have his memories here. It's kind of like that episode uh, of of Black Mirror. I think it's called Polar Bear or something like that, where uh, there's a lady who's being like eternally punished for a crime she did, but she doesn't even remember the crime, so she doesn't even feel guilty about it. So she just thinks she's in hell for no reason. You know, it kind of has a similar vibe to that. Yeah, he kind of pulled an anti-Av doll. Uh, in terms of what website I use for the manga, I think for this specific one I had to just look it up somewhere. But uh, JoJo's Bizarre Colored Adventure is a website that I think hosts uh, like mega uploads of all the colored parts. Up until the point where it's colored at this point. A cat's cradle can exist for all eternity with only a few simple patterns. I don't know what the fuck that means, chat, but I'm very intrigued. I have no idea what you're saying, but I'm interested. Uh, so anyway, right, this is the guy that he's supposed to kill. And he's having a big old, big old fucking keck at, at the state of things. I think he's, he's boarded up in this room and he's done something horrible, I think. He, like, murdered someone or something like that. Yeah, child murderer case of Oak Tree Hill 15 years ago. Prescription establishes at midnight. I don't I don't get what that sentence means, but okay. Oh, he's got part six mouth. His mouth is huge. Pigeons or police or whatever, try to get me if you can. If you've given me permission, I'm coming in. Oh, right. He, this guy, he capitalizes on this guy bragging, sort of like how Kira in life got fucked over by himself bragging. But this guy says, huh, try to get me if you can. And he's like, I'm taking that as an invitation. <laughs> Which is pretty hilarious. And he comes in and fucks this guy up. And this is the big reveal that he knows his name is Kira Yoshikage. So this is presumably to people who left and watched or, and read this on their own. I would love for them to have not known he was Kira up until this point. 
Because when I read this, I knew he was Kira the whole time. I got it spoiled for me. So, hmm. Uh, yeah, getting getting Jojolian might be a little more difficult. They might not have it completely updated on that website, but uh, then you just sort of look around. I think there's a website called Manga Dex that has Jojolian, like recent Jojolian hosted on it. Uh, I have trouble finding like the most recent color scans because I know they're like always releasing them kind of slowly, uh, but some of those websites don't update them. They update them like one at a time or whatever. One like chapter at a time. Or I think, no, I think they don't do that. They just, like, upload it in, like, big chunks. Whatever. Uh, one thing I can say is I feel certain I will not go to heaven. What am I to do from here? I don't have the answer to that. But if time continues forever, I may find some sort of happiness by making my job my purpose for living. All right. My work was to put you at sh to shame at your happiest moment. I guess you can be on the newspaper again. <laughs> Wow. Brutal. He deceived a woman and found his own place. So, hey, did he get his hand back? When did he get his hand back? I think he just, like, took them with him, right? Yeah, they must have They must have just, like, grown back onto him. He's like a sea, like a sea anemone. Or like a, a, a ocean star. So, I, like I said before, I, I really like Dead Man's Questions. This is not actually the end. It's got this cool little logo, too, though, of, like, the skull guy wearing the same, like, bowler hat. Uh, I, I think this is a great, like, epilogue to the part. I think this, it, it kind of uh, negates the abrupt ending of actual part four, even though all it does is expand more on Kira, who was the guy that we needed to know the least about, honestly. Dead Man's Answers. Whoa, look at that. It says Dead Man's Answers on the sides there. For some reason. But I, I think this is a really good bit. I remember when I first read this, I was like, wow, that was... It just sort of thematically ties it all together, and... It's... It's, it's how an epilogue should be. It doesn't actually wrap everything up, but it uh, gives you some answers. All right. Uh, blah, 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 but for the peace of my heart, there are times where money is necessary. Right. And he's constantly having to, like, manage with things. Oh, he just stole from a, uh, ATM machine. Or an ATM! An uh, automatic transfer machine machine. I don't even know what AT stands for. Keep the change. All right. A lot of this, a lot of the dialogue in this is just about, like, his day-to-day -day life and about how he constantly is having to fight for survival. Oh, and he, he takes the time to smell the flowers, literally at the beginning of the chapter, but here he's uh, just looking out the window. He enjoys the peaceable moments, just like Kira, even though he doesn't remember that much about his actual life. That's strange, I only see women. Where do the men eat their lunch? There's no way they could go without lunch. How was it when I was alive? And there's this fucking obnoxious kid. It'll make you puke, dear. Doesn't he like... Yeah, he like assaults this kid. He's like, ah, uh, this kid's being a twat. I'm just gonna like slap him and make him do horrible... What the fuck? It's like making him eat... His shoe? Is that his- he's putting his foot in his mouth, literally. Wow. This is like some Under the Silver Lake shit. He's beating the shit out of this kid. I forgot this happened. Huh. A mother bears a child, but where does the baby's spirit come from? He's- he's always trying to figure out the nature of his existence, but he's just confused. Does the mother's spirit duplicate like a cell, creating the boy's spirit? Is the spirit of that kid something that came from the netherworld to the mother, like many say? These are the titular dead man's questions, I'm pretty sure, by the way. He's literally asking dead man's questions. If I can know for sure, I could have a clear goal for this new life. And now he's going to talk to the fucking, like, monk. A soldier? Are you talking about the self-defense force? Does this country even have soldiers? This monk lady, I don't even know if she has a name... 
like the like least important character in all of JoJo. I would for I almost uh, thought is this the same person that told Rohan that he was related to uh, Raimi, but no, that was like an old man. We already know the address. Go to the location. Finish the job quickly. Do you have a picture? Do you have a name? No. I don't care if they're, they're a good person or a bad person, but if I kill the wrong person, you're the one who's going to feel bad. I think we don't actually get to see him kill the soldier, either. Do you know about mansion ghosts? Ghost mansions? Ghost house? The movie? <laughs> Um, I think this lady can see Kira because she is a spiritual person. I mean, presumably she practices some religion that has something to do with the ghosts. I don't think it's I don't think it's ever properly explained. But that's that's what I have to assume. Uh okay, yeah, 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 yeah. The mansion. There's a ghost house, right. The house itself is a spirit and is still standing. I remember this now. We do get to see this. It's literally Ghost House, the fucking movie. Do you remember that movie where there was like a... It, it turned out... Monster House, that's what it's called. Where there's like a... It turned out there was like a morbidly obese woman that was buried in concrete in the basement. And they go down there and they see like the impression that her body left before it like rotted away. I was like, this is a kid's movie! Huh? Okay. Uh, she's seen the ghost of Toshima. No. Uh, 56 people have committed suicide or died strange deaths in the area near the officer's house. Find the reason and remove it. Right, I remember where this is going. Why do you remain here and not move on to the netherworld? Do you have some sort of goal here? I don't know if you're trying to become a saint or whatever, but I don't want to. But I won't step into your morals. You're only using me, and I'm simply doing jobs. I don't care about justice or evil. How can you, still living, be so sure that there's another world? What if it doesn't exist? Well, I don't fucking know. She's got no answer for that, and that's the last we ever see of her. I'm pretty sure. And uh, so he goes into this house. These are some really cool panels, by the way. I'd love to see this even colored. Come on. Whatever. There's probably a fan coloring out of, of it out there somewhere. Uh, and so he's like, okay, I'm here in the ghost house. I wonder what's up with this ghost house that's making everyone want to fucking, like, kill themselves. They're all made of ghost. <laughs> it's like Pokemon. Dun, 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 dun. Uh, so he's looking for the target. There's a guy in the fucking, like, photograph. Actually, is that a mirror? Weird. Taka Takahisa Yumiji? That's, that's gotta be some Japanese reference that I don't understand. Dante's Inferno, Les Mis. Okay. He's, oh, he's like, oh, this is an empty house that I can live in, and it's got tons of cool books. That I can just, like, chillax and read. This is awesome. I've got all the time in the world. I hope my glasses don't break. No. But then he finds, just like me, he finds a bunch of eggs. And these eggs have these weird fucking things inside them. That are, like, they're like little lizard things. He's like, why the fuck are these eggs here? They're, like, ghost animals. I think they're called, like, ghost eaters or something like that. And they, they like... They consume ghostly materials. <laughs> and he's like, how the fuck did eggs get in here? Oh no, they must be like evil eggs. And this is this is a part that like, in black and white, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on for some of this. But the eggs keep appearing everywhere. How are these dead eggs able to move? <laughs> he's being haunted by egg. Only living things grow. This isn't a ghost. So they're like, there's some sort of animal that lives in the ghost world that eats ghosts. And there's one right there. Like, it's kind of indistinct. 
but it's like zooping through his body right now. A little hard to tell in black and white, but uh, if they were like bright orange, it'd be a lot easier to tell. They've got like a target pattern on them. And they're these weird little like salamander things. They're like weird little slugs. And they, they eat you and they say, chik bia bia or something like that. <laughs> Very weird. Some plant-like things are growing from my arm. It's trying to change me into something else. Oh yeah, and his arm's about to get cut off again, by the way. The cleansers. These things have the function of cleaning the world so it won't be overflowing with the spirits of the dead. The neat little bit of lore there. It's like, that's the reason. Like, you always think in movies where there are ghosts. It's like, well, how are there not... How is the world not overflowing with ghosts? It's like, all right... Jojo has a right around for that. There are things that go around and consume them. And they got little legs and butts. What the fuck am I looking at here? These things are so weird. They kind of look like uh, something from part seven. What happens to those who are cleansed? Did they go to the netherworld? The table melted and turned into bugs. My arm was changing into something else too. And where did these things come from? This house was a nest of eggs. They're trying to cleanse me. <laughs> it's like, what if this happened when I ate the egg yesterday? Alright, what is he looking for? He's looking for, like, the painting or something? Oh no, he's looking for the fucking... He's got a gun! Oh right, because he saw in the picture, in the background, there was a case with a gun in it. And now he's looking for the actual room that has uh, the gun in it, so he can shoot them. Oh, look at that, that's some... Look at that. Some part six shit right there. Those of you who know what I'm talking about. But he shoots the shit out of them! With a little bit of the big brain move. And, uh... Oh yeah, and he fucked up a bunch of records. And, and now it's like, oh man, he gets... He's so fucked up because... He went into this house where it would have been like a perfect place to live his peaceful life, but then he gets kicked out of it because it's full of ghost eaters. It's like, ah, god damn it. He was so close. My name is Yoshikage Kira. I can't remember when or how I died, but I feel certain I won't go to the heaven. The heaven! They're kind of like Langoliers. That's a Stephen King reference. Huh. They are a little bit like Langoliers, just a little bit. If this continues forever, I may find some sort of happiness by making my job my purpose for living. That's it, I think. No. Oh, the target was absent. That bitch. She didn't know about the eggs? That bitch. You could be experiencing firsthand the credibility of the netherworld. <laughs> it's a shame they took my left arm. So he lost his arm twice as a ghost. Twice as an adult, twice as a ghost. And he's still got one left to lose. I wonder if that monk woman's would stick instead. Huh? Like, take her arm? My, what a beautiful blue sky. Where should I rest tonight? And that's it. That's truly it. For Dead Man's Questions. Oh, look at that. His, your, your, your tie is blowing in the wind, bro. Hirohiko. That's a cool ending page. Oh yeah, and this is the, uh, <laughs> look at that. This is the artwork I was telling you about where he's like melding into the floor. And there's one of the like ghost eaters in a bottle. And then there's, there's other, I'll go through it eventually, like other one-offs, but this one also, this was part of a volume publishing of a Rohan one-off, Dead Man's Questions, and uh, this one about a guy in a jail cell that's not even JoJo related, which is pretty interesting. Hmm. So this is from Araki, I guess. This is a work where I drew a character who longs for his peace of heart even after death and who continues to grow mentally. The character is the greatest adversary in part four, a dead murderer. In the world of life after death, if the spirit lives on, it would not be a world where everything goes, but where there are rules just like this world. The ghost should go through the same amount of hardships as we do, if not more. That was the idea that sparked this story, but drawing this character who couldn't listen to the music he loved so much it kind of made me cry. 
That's that's good insight into that. I don't know. I very much like this one. This is one of my favorite uh, one-offs of Iraqis. I think... I don't know. It's it's not like a necessary piece to read, but I think it adds a lot of context to his uh, character, even though it doesn't give you any new background. It just You get to see him in a new situation, you know? Evangeliers? <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's Langoliers, but it might be... Uh, but yeah, that's that's it for part four. I don't know. This is this is one of my favorite parts. Uh, there's also there is a book. Uh, let me look this up so I can see what it's called actually, because I forget what it's called. There's a light novel. Uh, Diamond is unbreakable. Light novel. I've never read this, but um, what the fuck is it? Uh, here it is. Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, Fourth, Another Day. Uh, and it, I'm just going to read briefly. I've never read this. I don't know much about it. Uh, but it's just a, a light novel that has a lot of the characters from Part 4 in it. I'm just going to read off the wiki. The, no the novel shows the events following a mysterious death in Morio, alternating between the perspectives of Koichi, uh, Chihiho Futaba, and Takuma Hasumi, two original characters and the protagonists of the novel. Hasumi's stand is called The Book and possesses the power to record everything he sees or feels into a small leather-bound book. Josuke and several other Part 4 characters appear as side characters. A third storyline from the perspective of Ara Akari Hirai, another original character, takes place in 1981. So, I don't know much about it. There's, like, cool artwork of a lady, like, pulling a knife out of her body. <laughs> and there's, like, cool artwork of Josuke, but, uh... I won't really go into it here. I'll... Hold on. Can I save this? No, I save it as a web page. Never mind. I may talk about it some other day. Uh, because it, it seems vaguely interesting, but I've never read it. I have read Purple Haze Feedback, so maybe, uh, maybe one day I will just talk about all light novels. Maybe I'll, like, read up on this one, too. I don't know. But yes, Part 5 is next. Uh, Part 5 also has its spinoffs. I will talk about Purple Haze Feedback. Uh... Part 5 I will probably start soon, I think. Uh, so, you know, look forward to that. Uh, but yeah, to wrap it up, this is one of, if not my favorite part of JoJo. It's really great. Just like the rest of JoJo, it's got flaws. It's not perfect. It's still a very interesting series to... Uh, it's a very interesting series to, to go through, you know? There's, there's lots to pick up on. Every time I go through it, there's something new that I notice. Like this time, that fucking button on Kira's hand. What the fuck is up with that? Oh, man. But it's great. I, I've enjoyed going through this. Uh, and I hope you did, too. Thanks for watching, guys. Take it easy.